Brian Johnson started Project Blueprint with the idea of obtaining ideal health. He calls himself a professional rejuvenation athlete, a modern day Magellan exploring, searching for the fountain of youth. Although maybe a little strange, I think Brian seems like a decent and interesting guy. And I think this project that he's on is certainly fascinating. With all the good that is in the Blueprint program, there are many flaws and assumptions, especially when it comes to practical application for someone who wants to improve their health and longevity. And I think this YouTube comment from Brian, although it's probably from some paid personal assistant, sums up what I think is wrong with Blueprint. Prioritizing health isn't and shouldn't be hard, and it's not a message that helps people move forward. So as a performance nutritionist, I'm going to break down Brian's daily diet, the pros, the cons, the misleading claims, and give you the effective principles that you can apply to your diet and it won't cost you $2 million a year. So let's look at the big picture fundamentals of the Blueprint diet. According to Brian, every single calorie has had to fight for its life to be in his daily diet. The very first thing that stood out to me about Brian's diet was that he claims to consume a constant 10% calorie deficit. And for a long time, he said that this was actually a 25% calorie deficit. Now, it doesn't take an expert to work out that that simply cannot be true. In order to lose weight constantly, we need to be in a constant energy deficit. It's simply the law of conservation of mass. So therefore, that means that if we're in a constant energy deficit, we'll constantly be losing weight. It's not a debatable topic. If Brian was in a constant energy deficit, no matter how small, he would be in hospital within a matter of months from starvation and organ failure. Many might argue that Brian takes various drugs and medications to offset this, but no amount of medicine can account for insufficient calories. On a side note, I do know that this diet contains over 100 pills per day, but I'm not going to talk about them much because that probably requires a video of its own. When we diet to lose weight, our body switches into a mode of metabolic adaptation. As someone who's dieted down to single digits of body fat myself many times, I've experienced this a lot. It's not a permanent thing, but it's essentially like putting your iPhone on battery saver mode. I recall that at one point in my last bodybuilding prep, when I was dieting down, I was walking about 20,000 steps a day and I was only eating 1600 calories at one point and I was 177 pounds. Yet I was barely losing any weight at all, even though my Fitbit told me that it was in this huge calorie deficit. I certainly don't recommend that people follow a really low calorie deficit for a long time, especially one that's going to keep you at 7% body fat or below, just like Brian. Having body fat that low absolutely tanks your natural hormone production. In this 2013 study on a natural bodybuilder, by the time he had reached 6% body fat, his testosterone levels were so low that they weren't even detectable on the scale. Low testosterone can lead to depression, low libido, loss of muscle mass, lack of energy, insomnia, increased risk of osteoporosis, and much more. I also did some back of a napkin calculations based on Brian's calorie intake, his average calories burned during exercise, and his fat-free mass. And these calculations show that his level of energy availability, which is essentially the amount of calories left for basic biological function after counting our exercise, is only 26. That is classified as a clinical level of low energy availability. In women, this can lead to things such as a loss of their menstrual cycle, mood disturbances, hair loss, and infertility. In men, you can see similar symptoms to that of low testosterone, as well as an increased risk of stress factors in all genders. It's important to note that the Blueprint protocol has over time include hormonal drugs like human growth hormone, testosterone, thyroid medicine, and DHEA. Most of these are not available without a medical diagnosis. Now, Brian might require some of these for health purposes, but I can't help but think that based on many case studies and staying extremely lean and being in a state of significant low energy availability isn't having an impact on this. He states that Blueprint is a template for someone who wants to be on the outer frontier of health, indirectly promoting it. And I'm all for people doing what they want with their own diet and their life and their health. But be aware, if you purposely put yourself in a clinical state of low energy availability, it might be detrimental to your health, particularly without the use of prescription drugs. The next most obvious thing about the Blueprint diet is that it entails a 16 to 18 hour fast, with Brian's last meal consumed around seven to eight hours before bedtime. Fasting has been practiced in religious circles for thousands of years, but has gained lots of popularity for its supposed health benefits Brian's particular method for fasting is intermittent fasting or time-restricted feeding. I think this actually can be beneficial for some individuals. In some people, fasting can help control overall calorie intake or help you stay in a calorie deficit. This meta-analysis showed that there was no difference between intermittent fasting and normal constant calorie restriction or weight loss. And we see similar results from this 2018 meta-analysis looking at various forms of fasting, which showed no additional benefits in weight loss or cardiometabolic health compared to continuous energy restriction. It does appear that in animals, caloric restrictions 
sometimes does increase lifespan, but this isn't practically feasible for humans and it could lead to those negative side effects that we talked about before. In terms of living longer, there is no research in humans to say that different forms of fasting improves lifespan, but we can't completely root it out either. I personally err on the side of caution rather than recommending that people do it specifically for this reason. With that said, restricting your food intake in the evening is potentially beneficial for metabolic health, particularly with those who have obesity or metabolic dysregulation. Essentially, you want your body to be doing the bulk of digesting and processing food when you're awake in line with your circadian rhythm. Our body clocks, including our digestive system, are made to work in tandem with each other, and a misalignment of these has shown to cause unfavorable effects on blood sugar control. According to Dr. Sachin Panda, who's an expert in sleep and metabolic health, we should aim to have our last meal about two to three hours before bed and fit all of our meals into an eight to 10 hour window. So I think we can definitely take some lessons from Brian's feeding window. However, the seven to eight hour cutoff before bed is probably overkill for most people and it doesn't seem to be based on any literature that I've found, but I guess that will come down to personal preference and response. Now, Brian consumes a vegan diet by choice and although this will trigger some people, a diet that is low or void of red meat and processed meat is associated with lower risk of certain types of cancer, particularly colorectal cancers. For context, I personally do eat both of them from time to time and I'm willing to deal with that marginal increased risk. It is not debatable that a diet that is high in fruit and vegetables is associated with better health outcomes. Simply, the more you eat, the better. I have talked about this before in previous videos. And Brian consumes a lot of them, about two and a half pounds or one kilo or 10 servings of fruit and vegetable each day. This is quite a lot, but it's not an insane amount for someone who's a vegan. Now, I can fully get on board with the message of eating more fruits and vegetables. They provide both lots of essential and non-essential beneficial nutrients, including fiber, antioxidants, and phytochemicals. Personally, I don't think it makes any sense for me to talk about each ingredient in each meal because we eat nutrients in a food matrix. It's impossible to say how one specific nutrient in one food affects our body independent of its interactions with the other foods in our diet. Therefore, research looking into diet and health, we typically look at patterns rather than specific foods. The Blueprint diet overall consists of super veggie in the morning and nutty pudding in the afternoon and a rotation of various salads as the last meal. And overall, I think it is a really good balance of nutrients. There is a high amount of variety of plants, as I already mentioned, saturated fats are quite low, which in high amounts impact LDL cholesterol, and there's adequate amount of protein. But the idea to this specific combination of foods and nutty pudding or any of the other meals is superior or best for health is not based on anything other than personal opinion. Suggesting that specific combinations is based on science and can be extrapolated to others who want to get the same results is simply misleading. Although I truly do think that this is a good dietary pattern, there's nothing magic about the specifics. I know that Brian just logs what he eats and he does what works for him, but you only have to look on YouTube or other blogs to see that people are copying the protocol down to a T, but that's not a surprise because Brian promotes this diet as the optimal way to improve longevity. Although not explicitly stated, there is a general sense from reading the blueprint that foods such as pizza or donuts are completely off limits and are considered self-harm or self-destructive. There's no mention of how we can derive enjoyment from food and how that can impact our mental well-being and in turn overall health. While I personally do recommend people consume a balanced diet, balance means that there's a little bit of the things that you do enjoy as well as all the good food. As a nutritionist and a coach, I would be much more concerned about someone's psychological well-being if they got stressed about eating an unhealthy meal from time to time than it would be about the effects of that meal on their body. Obsession with eating clean all the time is a medical condition known as orthorexia nervosa. There are also some strange or outlandish claims made with regards to this diet. In a Vice interview, Brian claimed that he consumed 10 times the amount of fiber as the average American. That would be equal to about 150 grams per day, but from simply looking at the diet, it's clear that he probably only gets about one third of that. Recently, Brian also started to push his olive oil product, which on his website states that it's better than resveratrol, which to be honest, isn't that hard because it was proven as a pretty useless dietary supplement many years ago. And while extra virgin olive oil does have a higher polyphenol content than more refined forms, something just doesn't sit right with me when someone claims to have the unique answer and is also selling you the solution, but I'm sure his oil is fine. If you're in a state of health that you're currently not happy with, you would be shocked with how much you could improve your overall health or get 95% of what Brian Johnson has by maintaining a healthy body fat, increasing your cardio, lifting more weights, eating more plants, drinking less alcohol and improving your sleep. And that's the level of specificity that you need. If you're not doubling down on these things and focusing on what types of mushrooms you should be putting in your super veggie, then you're really stepping over dollars to pick up pennies. There are aspects of the overall blueprint that I disagree with. Things like promoting increased screening and testing such as MRIs, which can actually lead to worse health outcomes. Dr. Rohan Francis from the channel Medlife Crisis has really created an excellent video on this topic if you're interested. I also don't agree with the absolute claims made by the 
the program and the implied idea that the specifics of the program are what get the results rather than the overarching principles. That there is something magic about nutty pudding or super veggie compared to any other diet with similar levels of plants. Or the notion that this is somehow adding to the science and not just a cool interesting experiment. There are many more but that might be a video for another day. With all that said, there are much worse practices being promoted by health influencers out there. Think of people like the liver king or carnivore MD. The D blueprint diet is in general something that most people can learn from and here are the takeaways you can apply to improve your health. Number one, eat more fruits and vegetables as much as you possibly can. Number two, focus on whole minimally processed foods. Number three, reduce your saturated fat consumption, particularly from animal sources. Number four, be mindful of the food that you eat. Have a plan. Number five, less red meat and processed meat is probably going to be beneficial for most people, although moderation is fine. Number six, try and keep your meal times regular with minimal food before bed. And finally, my addition is to make sure that you're eating enough calories. Sure, an energy deficit is fine in order to get to your ideal weight, but less isn't always better. I want to go back to the message that I shared earlier. Prioritizing health isn't and shouldn't be hard. We can get so caught up in trying to find the optimal approach that our own perfectionism stops us from actually doing anything because if we completely avoid it then we don't have to face up to our unrealistic standards. In fact this is the exact topic that I'm researching right now in my PhD. If you want some practical advice on achieving the 80-20 of optimal health and fitness I encourage you to check out the free course that I have linked below and if you found this helpful or have any questions let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed the video you might like this one that I made on Element.